Welcome to Tesla Info and today we're going to talk about tyre pressures and warnings and how we maintain the correct pressure in our tyres. Your Tesla has a tyre pressure monitoring system and will show you a low pressure indication and a warning on the dashboard if they're too low. Other than complete blowouts, the two main causes are a drop in weather temperatures, which is why we often see these warnings appear as we go into winter, or it could be something like a slow puncture from a nail or something in a tyre or maybe a sleaking valve. If only one tyre has a warning, then you need to get that tyre checked, but in the meantime, this guide will help keep you going. When it comes to tyres, the first thing to do is know what the correct tyre pressure should be. And the easy way is to open the app, go to controls, and you'll see there's a little wheel in the top corner, and clicking on that shows you the tyre pressures and what the correct value should be. Alternatively, you can look at the B pillar, which is the pillar by the door, and it tells you there. So let's look at a typical example. You start driving and the car alerts you that you have a low pressure on one wheel. You notice that even the other wheels are 41 PSI and not the 42 they should be. Unfortunately, life isn't that simple. And as you drive the car, the tyre pressures will continue to increase as the tyres warm up. So in this case, the tyre was initially 4 PSI below where it should be. So if we inflated it now as a rough guide, we would increase the tyre pressure by 4 PSI, irrespective of what the numbers were showing, to cater for the fact the tyre might be warm. The other tyres are 1 PSI down, or were, so we could also inflate those by 1 PSI. Ah, the lovely drone of a tyre inflator or compressor. A necessary evil when blowing up tyres. OK, we've jumped back in the car having corrected the pressures and it's not they've not been updated for 10 minutes so nothing's happened. They're still in alert. So what do we do? Well, we simply drive the car and within a few metres, uh, I think you have to go over 50 miles an hour, they'll correct. You may also see the situation where one tyre is alarmed but is at the same pressure as the others. And this is because the alarms on a tyre pressure monitoring system actually follows what is called a hysteresis loop. Where as a tyre drops, if it passes an alarm threshold it will go into the alarm state and it won't clear until it's reached a much higher pressure um, as shown on the chart. And if you compare points A and B, A is actually still in an alarm state even though it's at a higher pressure than point B because it hasn't entered the alarm state again. Each tyre alarms individually, so it cannot really odd if one tyre has been in the sunshine having entered an alarm state because it may be warmer and therefore have a higher pressure than another tyre that has a lower pressure indicated but has never been in an alarm state. It may all seem confusing, but at the end of the day, if a tyre is showing an alarm state, you simply need to add air and blow that tyre up to the correct pressure, and the alarm will clear. OK, before we go, a quick word on the different types of tyre inflators. You can get battery-powered ones, um, which are great. They're portable. You can move them around easily. They're great for topping up air pressures a small amount, but they're not any good if you have a, a big blowout and you need to a lot of air. Alternatively, you've got the type which plug into effectively the cigarette socket. These will just go all day long. Um, they're just not as easy to use because you always have to plug them into the glove box using the uh, power accessory. We'd also look out for ones with a screw-in thing into the valve because they're much more easy to use than these with the little clip-over ones which put a lot of pressure on the valve when you close them. Anyway, we'll just leave you with a bit more of the drone noise from a tyre compressor.